Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Today we're going to look at a classic X-Force issue. All you Rob Liefeld lovers out there, oh wait a minute, we'll get into that in a minute. But first, uh, what's new, Ed? What are you working on? Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Every, every couple of days, man, generating a new page of uh, Red Room comics, and every Tuesday I'm putting them live on my Patreon to start. This is just for the early adopters. Uh, three bucks get you the archive. I have uh, about four dozen pages up there as of this recording. New pages go live every Tuesday. Like I said, three bucks get you the archive, and this stuff is up there in a high enough resolution that people are sending me their Red Room uh, bootlegs that they're printing up for themselves so that they don't have to stare into the sun of the uh, computer screen or the phone screen while they read. Look at that, man. It's a family comic. Yes, I was going to say. All ages, it yeah. looks like. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, when they talk about young adult novels, this would have been a young adult novel for me, man. Not that, like, you know, pansy-type shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, also, because we're going bourgeois these days, man... Uh, Hip Hop Family Tree art is being auctioned at Sotheby's Auction House right now up until uh, September 15th. And uh, the auction is uh, online. You can uh, hit the links in the description below. There are eight different pieces that are available from, from my body of work amongst uh, 120 different items from your favorite rappers. Uh, the Ed Piscor Studio Edition that came out in January is the uh, the the buy me now option. Uh, if this was eBay, man, because all the stuff that's up for auction is in this book, as well as like 200 pages of other stuff, including my uh, couple pages of X Men. My latest comic, October on in 1976, world's first black light comic, printed with fluorescent ink, so it practically glows in the dark. Is available now wherever comics are sold. You can get this at your local comic shop. You can get this online. Wherever you buy comics, now's the time to act. If you're a fan of weird comics, if you're a fan of unique printed matter, you want this in your collection. And uh, like I said, act now because we didn't print that many of these. And they are doing well. So pick this up wherever comics, uh, wherever you buy your comics. And if you're into making and you want to know more about how this was put together, I did make a 350-page process zine that covers every draft. It has high-res scans of the original art. It talks about the process behind making this unique comic. You can find that on my website at jimrug.com. So, October on in 1976. Grab it now while you can. I believe we were talking about Rob Liefeld. This is X-Force number eight. At the time this was coming out, probably my favorite comic whenever I would go to the store. If there was a new X-Force, I was very excited at the time, Ed. And this issue was one of my major young... I remember a lot of my like young disappointments when it came to <laughs> pop culture. And, and I sort of share in that with, uh, with a certain profile of, of person you know like the very first disappointment jim was that one episode of gi joe and i know you all know it when the viper is coming do you do you know this one i don't know it no the viper is coming it's all build up they got a phone call the viper is coming and everybody you guys know it. you're gonna put something in the comments and then at the very end of the episode it's actually racist it's like it's like a day laborer kind of guy and he's like bring has a mop and bucket and it's like i am the viper I'm here to wipe your windows. Jeez. <laughs> and, oh, and, and they had, wow. they had battalions and, and stuff set up. And I'm telling you, we're going to get a lot of comments on that because it was the biggest disappointment in my life when I was like five. And this was such a disappointment when I was like eight because I was such a Rob Liefeld fan. And I, who is this guy? You know, only Rob knows how to draw these characters. Who is this guy infiltrating my beloved X-Force comic. And we should say, Cable was the reason I loved X-Force, this mysterious character that Rob Liefeld had introduced to New Mutants and had taken the world by storm. And this is going to be past, present, and future of Cable, a turning point. This is a cool, whole new team. I barely know these characters. We've seen Domino a little bit and Kane a little bit, but what is this? It's like Cable's other team before X-Force. Yeah. A lot of promise on that cover. His riff on a forever people. And dude, things were happening at such a rapid pace at this point. I swear to God, I had toys of like Grizzly like the month after this comic came out. It would not surprise me. I mean, this really was printing money at the time. So I was looking for uh, Steve Bucciolato. Bucciolato is the colorist on this. 
But the noteworthy part in these credits, guest penciler, Mike Mignola. Yes, sir, man. Probably a lot of people's first exposure to Mike Mignola. Yeah, like, I think one of the things that bummed me out was, like, I, of my, you know, 50 comics that I had, Mignola represented a, a sort of healthy batch. I had the Superman comics that he drew with that, uh, with that Banshee lady. I had uh, Thor comics where he did the backups and stuff. Which and, seems like a match made in heaven. And I was just like, it's this guy again. And look at these skinny ankles, and look at these weird guys, and yeah. there's not enough lines. Uh, this one, we should say, too, inked by Bob Wyasek, but clearly Mignola. Like, this is his style through and through. And everybody, look. You see the detail. You see Grizzly's furry arms. I don't see a lot of the cross-hatching that I'm used to. This is what we came for. All these lines, all this bullshit detail, and this is what you're getting. It was, it was a shock, culture shock right there. But now with the passage of time, we take a look at this, man, and... Uh, the best-looking issue of X-Force. <laughs> yes, we, we, we acknowledge, to sort of betting on the wrong pony in a lot of ways uh, when it comes to just, like, you know, the craft of comic book making. But even down to the color, to me, is inspired. You don't see this color on newsprint comics nice. that much. You know, you don't see these weird grays. And, like, the, the warm colors are used to perfect effect uh, in just the right places, I have to feel like Mignola had some hand in that. You know? I don't know, man, but they do look good. They, they look really good, and but everything does. It's so elegant, the treatment that he applies to these characters, which to me suggests good character design because it works in both styles really, really well. Like, I think I love this issue now. Look at these figures. They're amazing, dude. Um, working from Rob Liefeld Ruffs. Yes, that's the part that I found out many years later, and uh, very shocking. You can find some of those online to do comparisons of like page layouts, and Liefeld credited as plotter. You know, he was the storyteller at this point, and I guess that's how he was probably turning in those plots as the rough layouts. And so that's what Manuel is working from, and just really making it sing, man. Yeah, in a, in a lot of ways, abiding by sort of the the, pa the panel count uh, in a lot of the Rob's roughs from from the stuff that's been leaked like leaked out, and he even gets the germ of like the compositions. It's real fun to compare and contrast. There's, there's about a half dozen pages out there where you can see the Rob Liefeld version uh, right next to what uh, what Mignola ended up doing. And I'll put some of those up. Uh, you know, as we as we get the pages that where it makes sense or where we have the rough for comparison's sake. Again, the color ed that you that you point out, like this blue and into the grays, very unusual. This color treatment looks great, but very unusual. It's all these cool colors, lots of blues. All, all the all the warms pop though, and yeah, and you especially know, especially grizz. The the uh, the Hellboy comics are so noteworthy for that. So so it, that's why I. I mean, just look at where these reds show up. You know, this is not willy-nilly cartoony. I mean, coloring. You see the yellow now that they're inside here starting to, to come on on it, board, it, something we haven't seen until this page. Yeah. So, again, good use of color to suggest we're in a new space. Right, and it's, and it's you know, the illumination of, like, a screen. And look, they just, like, leave the, the floor white. So, it, it, I mean, it feels like they're in a very bright setting. Man, spotting the blacks, like like Domino mostly in blacks with her headgear and shoulder pads sticking out, the gun being a highlight. Mignola was a prized cartoonist to, to other cartoonists. Yeah. Um, around this time, like, he, he was responsible for doing the, uh, the covers for, like, all the um, annual crossovers and stuff. And that was, like, another thing where I'm like, Art Adams doesn't draw Mojo that way. You yeah. know, like, like, it was... You know, youthful naivete. It's a great layout. I'd be curious to see the original layout on this and see if this is a, a life out or a Mignola idea, but that's a really cool idea of having, like, the full face interrupted by a panel but still getting the, the, yeah. the pieces. Yeah. And that big, heavy black border around it. So strong. I wonder what Rob Liefeld thought of this at the time. Because it, as you said, Mignola definitely a guy that was respected by other cartoonists and maybe not reflected in his sales up to this point. But uh, stylistically, such a departure from that image, Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, Todd McFarlane style of, you know, a million little pen marks where this is clearly Tothian and it's like spotting blacks and, and emphasis on composition. 
what a panel, man. Oh, I know. And I love that you mentioned all of those names, because if you go to that Stan Lee video, like how, how to make more comics or whatever, where it's like Wills Portacio, Jim Lee, McFarlane, Liefeld, Mignola's the name that comes up when they're talking about like doing little things. And his name comes up several times in that conversation. So, so like those guys definitely had mad props for the dude. And look at like, this is synchronicity with colorist and artist, you know, which you almost fucking never saw from comics of this day. And he draws both the uh, AIM characters and Hydra and does great work with both of those. Yeah. I like that, I think, is just the coolest. The yellow with the purple face shield thing. This one, this, this one we have the roughs available for, and we have the roughs available for this one as well. Like, you know, just going into, like, the little boom tube. That's the thing. The six-pack is the forever people, you know, like... This is great. Another one of the examples of the color. That's a very cool concept. Like, yeah. you know, you could not get any simpler, I don't think, for this, and yet it reads perfect. But also that orange is your transition into, I don't know, a, century, a thousand years in the future or something. I forget where this is set, but, you know, he's going back to his, wherever he comes from, some future high-tech place. And you see it, you know, the transition. The orange is where he's going. The blue is where he's been. It's the same sphere. It's really great. Look, it carries through like the whole page. Yeah, and it's even like the placement. It's like you're heading this direction and you're coming from that. So it just, I mean, Mignola's a storyteller, man. Oh, man, that's great, the placement, because this is where you're going, where you're coming from, and left, right to, to clearly establish it. Really well done. And you see that orange carry over. You know, we're in this future headquarters, wherever he's working out of. Yeah, great tech, great cityscape. And look, man, Rob needed time to, to work on some other pages. Yeah, man, a big Rob Liefeld signature visible in that ad. Yeah, this shit is like n narking. This is like a, the snitch page because there would be like the snitch pages on the X-Men's too that have like Wildcats uh, imagery real big. Yeah, it's fun to see like what was going on, you know, what was getting pushed. This is almost in the wrestling terms like, you know, you go back and, and those podcasts cover some SummerSlam 92 and you'll hear names and you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that guy. And it's like Cage getting the big push, but that series just didn't work. I know, I'm looking at Nomad <laughs> right there. I, you know, I, I liked this so much. It was S. Clark Hallbaker. That's the art for this little tiny image because I, I was such a fan of his and he did like, I don't know, an issue and a half of it or something. Was not meeting that deadline. And boy, did that book fall off once you took a good artist off of it. Back to the Future, again with this great, the green. Haven't seen this color green in this issue, so it pops whenever they use it. And it's the flat colors. The flat colors really go with the, with these kind of like flat blacks. You know, the black is really a, another color. Uh, you know, when you're cross-hatching, it's a little bit different. But in this case, it's like, that's the same kind of treatment as you're getting with like a flat green. For, yeah, for, for, the, for the latecomers to Mignola's work, like, I think, like, steampunk is kind of like, a, a, an aesthetic that comes to mind or whatever you don't you don't you don't presume that he's you know sci-fi futuristic kind right. of guy but like he clearly could do it all you know like these are ambitious robot designs those work really well the metal arm works really well i love the metal arm by by mignola that's something that some people really don't do well but uh, he does and he gets a good size for him too he has like a weight and a heft it's what I want out of cable. A lot of people don't do a good cable. That's true. You know, we saw McFarlane's cable in the crossover. Nowhere near as effective as the Mignola version. I didn't see Dan Panosian's name mentioned earlier. Like, in the in the credits, it's not in there. But that's Panosian Inc. And if there ever was any. And now we're back to the, uh, the framing devices, of course, Rob Liefeld. In case anybody at home doesn't recognize the difference between this and this, uh, you know, the framing mechanism is Rob Liefeld, uh, possibly with the assistance of, of Panosian or um, Pacella was another guy that would do these kind of like big hatching, I don't know, sort of house, sort of staying in that extreme house style to some extent. When, but, it, uh, when, this, when this transitions to, you know, Panosian and Pacella, like that you'll, you'll see this kind of mark making, which is, that's, Rob is underneath there, but the, the finish is, is those guys. But uh, this pinup, that, that's all, that's all Rob. Love this. Yeah. Inking himself too, apparently. He would do these kind of things. And then in the background, you'd see like a character's name on the, on the tombstone. 
And it'd be like, what's it mean? Is this character going to die? Like Gideon, who gives a shit. But sometimes there'd be other scenes like that where it would imply like some character is going to die. Like there was some storytelling going on in the pinup. <laughs> but, but, but we're not done because this is a collection. <laughs> Indeed. I love it, dude. Look at that, man. The waist is all up high. Super tiny upper, upper bod. Lots of pouches, as everybody loves. You draw Cable incorrectly if you don't give him the Widow's Peak. Yes. Um, this is C this is Cable, not the guy with like the Tom Cruise white hair. Yeah, full full head of hair is not Cable. And Rob doesn't even draw it that way. Oh, I was looking at um, I was looking through old 2000 ADs, and I uh, have Liam Sharp Judge Dreads, man, Ooh. that that are fucking exquisite. I bet. That's exciting. Yeah. Joe Kubert ad. This thing was in a lot of comics. I would try to copy this. I'd try to understand it. It was another guy, almost like the Mignola, where if you're looking at Jim Lee's and Rob Liefeld's, this was such a different approach to drawing comics. Yeah. Yeah. It should. It might have been this ad where I was like, yo, mom, I want to go there. We should have dug it out, but uh, about two or three issues after this issue, you get the cablegrams about this issue. And let's say the audience response to Mike Mignola's work was divided. Not too different than <laughs> our young responses. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty uh, pretty funny. There's a couple of those Marvel issues that really have that kind of like great follow up letter column. Gotta the be... GI Joe Twenty One is one of those. Yeah. But uh, this is one of those issues that it it was definitely. I, I bet they got a little extra mail for this issue <laughs> than normal. That'll be a uh, episode unto itself, man. But we got to get out of here. We have comics to make. K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new videos are available. Uh, we're racing to 30,000 subscribers, so make sure you go ahead and do that. Get Octobriana in comic shops now. Subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor for the Red Room comics come out every Tuesday. And the Hip Hop Family Tree artwork is up for auction uh, through Sotheby's until September 15th. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything that's going on. And pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe merch and t-shirts at the links below this video. Jim we have to go make our penance for the way we uh, treated this, this issue of comics. Uh, go give them the marching orders. Read more comics.